Hey guys, welcome back to Power of Learning channel. Today we are going to see how we can trigger a flow from a gallery control in Power Apps. Of course, we have already seen how to trigger flow from Power Apps, but this is like from within the gallery. In gallery, you can add multiple records. So for each of that row, if you want to trigger a flow and get the data back and bind it to some other control in that row, that's what we are going to see in this today's video. We'll see what problem we, we might face and how we are going to uh, tackle with those problems. Now let's just understand a requirement quickly. You have, uh, you are adding multiple rows in a form. You have a form and you have a gallery control in that. You want to add multiple records in that gallery. And you have a business requirement where you need to get the data from a source where you need to make a flow call. The direct connector is not available in the Power Apps. So in that, for that reason, you have to make a call to the flow and flow will get the data from that particular application or data source. Uh, now, when you are adding a record, let's say here you can see that I have a gallery for the employees. When I add employee name, I need to get the employee code from the flow. Now, why I'm getting this? Because I can't directly get the employee code from the uh, Office 365 connector or even the Azure AD connector. I need to make a call to the flow and then flow will get the details uh, from the Azure AD. Now, whenever I add a row here in the gallery, I need to call a flow and get the data populated in the field next to the employee name, uh, the response, whatever I'm getting from the flow. That, that's the requirement. In your scenario, it could be anything. But the main problem is how to call the flow from uh, the gallery control and how to bind the response of the flow uh, to the control. Now let's just quickly have a look at the demo. This is my app where I've used this or configured this particular scenario. I'll just run this and we'll quickly see uh, the demo of it. Let's say this is a training session. We want to keep the training to the users in the organizations. And that's the list you are going to add here. This is a gallery control where I'll be adding the employee names. I want to populate the employee codes, which will be uh, fetched from the flow. So if I look for, let's say, Alex needs to get the training of Power Platform. So you can see that employee code department of course you can get it using the office 365 connector for the employee code we are making a call to the flow and let's say who else the legal needs uh, training on power platform and we have uh, nester needs training so you can see that the employee codes are being populated for the selected employee and it's working fine so we'll just see the details how we have implemented it so let's just go and edit this app by that time uh, it opens i'll show you the flow which i have used so this is the get employee id flow and if i just edit it and show you this is of course being triggered from the power apps uh, and i have sent the input as the user email address whatever user is being selected in that particular uh, control in the gallery so that is the input which is user email i'm using uh, action get user profile action and sending the email address it's just the uh, if you need to get the employee id you need to pass the field here like this employee id field and you will get the response you just send it back whatever uh, response you're getting to the employee id you are sending it back as uh, this particular uh, parameter output parameter that that's it's the straightforward flow back in the power apps so let's just directly jump into the gallery and in the gallery we have these controls so this is the combo box for the user selection this is these are the text input controls for the department as i already told you I'm using making use of Office 365 users connector. You can get the department from here. The employee ID is not present. We are not able to get it through the Office 365 users or Azure ID connector. That's the reason we are making call to the flow. 
now the main problem is the flow you can any uh, that's so what i'm doing here this is a combo box i'm going to the on change event of it and on in here you can see that i have made a call to the flow this is the flow get employee id dot run dot the email address of the selected user so self self property i'm using because this is the control on which i am writing this logic the function if you use self you can access the properties of the the control itself so i'm sending this email address to the flow now the main problem you might face is so if i just let me just show you the the problem what you might face is what you you might do is on, a, on an ideal uh, scenario what you will do is let's just set the response uh, employee id response to a variable and you will make a call to the flow so we are calling the flow we are getting the response we are storing that response in the variable okay uh, now this variable you will set it to this particular uh, the employer employee code field okay so what we have done we on the combo box where we are selecting the employee we, we have gone to on change event we have uh, first check this is a validation of course uh, just to check if the if it contains the the valid value we don't want to make a flow call with the empty data or invalid data and then we are calling a flow and we are setting that response the employee id in this variable and that variable is set as a default property to this field which is to this text input control now this is fine this will also work no issues with this but if you see here like let's say alex this is all okay this is you got the response the flow run you got the response you set it here but when you try to add new employee and you can see that the value is changed or set to all the fields here or all the controls from all the rows in the gallery why because we just have one variable where we are setting the response of the flow so whenever you add new row and you try to select the new employee the flow is getting called and the value of that variable is getting overridden which is set as a default to this field employee code field that's why it is overriding the previous value so if i show you again so you can see this the value will get changed now to how this is the problem so we are able to make a call to the flow from the gallery no issues with that but how to store the response of the flow in a way that this will not get overridden and for every row you will be able to bind that response to the control properly without overriding uh, with the latest value of the response now to do that currently what we are doing we are storing it in a variable so instead of storing it in a variable we will store it in a collection so we'll make use of key value pair combination we'll have a collection of key key would be the employee email address here in this case in your scenario it could be anything what whatever you have unique uh, identifier and the value would be the response of the flow what we are getting so instead of storing it in a variable we'll create a collection and we'll store the uh, the response in that collection and we'll bind that collections uh, value will filter on it filter on that collection and we'll bind it here so i'll just grab the code which i have already copied here and let's just go here on the on change event and i'll just paste it here now what we have done here is on change of this combo box this is validation and i have a collect function this is my collection and in this collection as i said i have two columns first is mail email address and the next is the id the employee id of the user this is is going to be key 
which is the selected user email address for this control you will get the email address from the control whatever user you select you will get the email address of it and the id would be the response from the flow now this is going to be a numerical value that's why i've used value function to typecast it because from the flow you always get uh, you can only send back a text value so here we are calling a flow we are sending the email address we are getting the employee id and we are storing it in a id column in this collection so we are making use of collect function we are adding this particular record in a collection on every uh, change or event when you are adding a new row whenever you select the user new record will get added in a collection with email address and with the response of the flow which is employed okay so this way your correct collection will get created now let me just so this is first part you are creating a collection now the next part is setting the default value to the employee code uh, input control here in the in the gallery for that also i have the code ready here i'll just grab it let's just go to the text uh, control of employee code default value and paste it here now here what we are doing we are filtering on this collection same collection we are filtering on the email address because that is the unique uh, field what we have we are filtering on the mail column and you will get it from this control which is employee name you can see it here okay so you will get uh, the employee name for that particular row in the gallery you will get the email address filter on the email address make use of first you will get the first record from that filter and then id so this will give you the employee code for that particular employee from the collection where we have stored all the employee ids and the the employee sorry the email address and the employee ids which we got from the flow now let's just run it again i'll just reset this forget about this you can feel it and let's see alex and who else wants the training lee wants the training who else want it uh, nestor wants it joni wants it okay so you can see it now now here there is no overriding no duplication of the data you can see that you got the unique employee ids because we have stored all the responses for for every call in a collection so if i show you the collection here you can see it you got the mail address email address and employee ids these employee ids we got from the flow so that's how you can uh, i mean triggering the flow is not a problem you can anyways just go to action go to power automate select your flow and you will be able to trigger the flow from here uh, from the on, on on the on change event but the problem is how you can store that information and bind it to the control the other controls in the same row so yeah that that's how we have tackled the problem you just store it in a collection and you bind the data the response from the collection to to the control so yeah that's it i guess uh, this will help you guys and let's just get back to the presentation what we did we created we made use of collection we created a collection we stored the the response from the flow in the collection we made use of filter first functions to bind the data from that collection to the other control in the same row in the gallery yeah so you don't need to make use of the variable of course that will create a problem because it's just the same variable for all the flow instances or for all the rows in the gallery so yeah that that's the way you can make use of collection and you will be able to get the response uh, you will be able to store the response from the flow for each row in the gallery yeah that's what i wanted to share in this video i hope this will help you guys thank you so much for watching and do like share subscribe and if you have any comments if you have any questions uh, better approach please put it in the comment i'll, I'll just i'll
check it out and if there is any question i'll i'll try to uh, respond to it thank you so much again